guys welcome to the next episode of the football clubhouse we know we have, it has been a long time that we have had fun together but uh, a lot is there to talk about and uh, we have prakar bhattacharya we have avik das we have group with so mukherji with us and uh, i don't think we can talk everything talk about everything in this one particular video but then let's start off with the quarter finals um the most important and the biggest news at the moment is bayern beating barcelona 8-2 so what is your take on that i am surprised personally but what is your take on that rupit further let's begin with you i mean i mean being you being a bayern fan i understand i understand your point of view like why you were actually worried but most of us being neutral being watching that game neutrally we knew something gonna something like this gonna happen maybe maybe not an 8 to thumping but we we predicted something around a five goal thriller but things went from bad to worse i mean this is this also helped help barcelona in a way like like they it's like going one step backward to go two steps forward so hopefully they'll come come back and it will take time for them because i see bayern i see lewandowski posting with a shirt with an 8 on it so i'm sure i mean legends That's come back like this is sure see i mean yeah it's legends come back like this as well so hope that uh, barcelona will again face bayern in near future and they can give it back yeah so, i that that's something i'm fearful of yeah you better be because we have seen in the past many times that yeah the teams bashing each other and then they are when they're coming back they are coming back with an added motivation or something i mean if if someone is a barcelona if uh, who they signed recently there's, Three, there's a new manager i'm, I'm forgetting the from name netherlands from yeah. netherlands yeah, yeah. And, and, and i the... i personally like him he's a he's a good coach has good number set his back and wenger is most likely time. replacing him at netherlands Who is it? Wenger is most likely replacing him in Netherlands because he has to leave the job at Netherlands to come and work at Barca. Yeah, I, I, I personally want to see Wenger at the Dutch line. I miss him. I mean, wait for any club. I'm sure he is not gonna come and join any EPL side for sure. Yeah. But I like to see Wenger in the Dutch line, not in the commentary box holding that mic because he doesn't no. fit in there. That's good for Ferdinand, yeah. not Wenger. that that's true but now let, let's talk about the other matches let's start off with atlanta and paris avik the uh, did you watch the match i'm sure he did it yes father yeah did you watch the match atlanta versus psg the match is the live match not the highlights not the highlights obviously all right up to 88 minutes it was all atlanta Yes, and then suddenly Mbappe happened. Who, Mbappe who, and Neymar. Neymar was exceptionally good in the whole match. Who scored the 90 minute goal for PSG? Hmm? Who scored the 90th minute goal for PSG? Hey, Actor to Marquinhos. Actor to. That yeah, yeah, that's it's a very like. Can't hear me. You can't hear me. Don't lie. You can hear me. Who scored the 90th minute goal? Actor. <laughs> Maxim, Maxim. Yeah, Chupa voting. Chupa, exactly. this guy. Whatever. Chupa voting and marking you. This. No, it was all Atlanta up to 88 this, minutes. This, this time he acted having a technical glitch. He was actually googling the name. I like it. No, no. I, I, <laughs> now, now let's let's let's. Yeah, sh- Barcelona sh- getting Arsenal is another view to watch. <laughs> all right, so that's some healthy banner I can see starting off, but then. uh abhi the what, what do you think uh, according how psg played and how neymar missed a lot of chances so many easy easy chances so uh, what do you think of today's match uh, neymar played exceptionally well but yes. uh, the problem with neymar was his finishing because he dribbled so much across the p- across the pitch but when it comes to finishing Uh, he just fell, but then the addition of Mbappe was the turning point in the match. The pace of Mbappe just uh, rattled down Atlanta's defense. But the 
most uh, alarming thing for PSG is its midfield. Its midfield uh, is not so good, and I think to the uh, semi final, uh, not to this. I think the semi final between Leipzig. I think Leipzig will take a will take an advantage of that bad midfield of PSG, and if uh, God said Neymar. If Neymar doesn't get injured in the match, because Neymar has a tendency to get injured in big matches, I have seen. So there is an alarming thing for PSG midfield for me, for my personal point of view. Prakar, what do you think? What what's going to be the outcome of this match, PSG versus uh, Leipzig? I think uh, today, if uh, Neymar is uh, playing the same thing, what he did. the last match i think right. psg can be exceptional and uh, they can win but uh, yes it will be a tough fight all right so do do you think leipzig can pull up pull through this in in any way uh yes i always hope because i like their game a lot the tactics they follow and they how they push the uh, other teams up so i think it can happen all right so how many in for uh, leipzig today that's two three oh all of us all right so we are going to get disappointed all together that's good uh, let's talk about another match is uh, as we have a city fan what what went wrong against leon everything <laughs> but then let, let, let's hear a uh, city fans perspective avik the what do you, what according to you went wrong just, just before just before he starts so i just want to ask like i was hearing a, i was reading an article like pep guardiola played the back three for the main reason like they they were already well prepared to face bayern in the next game and as bayern has a very no press and narrow press so it was a it was like a practice game for the bayern whom they're going to face next so is the, so is this true or something it's completely made up like uh, I, like I, ronaldo coming man you i didn't know this i didn't know this i think it's nothing like the only the thing is that No, my question was like, why City, who has been playing phenomenally with, and the I understand that that City plays the back four actually suits them. So, was the reason to shift into a back three in such an important match and knock out the new CL after having that 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 good win against Real Madrid? The thing is, uh, the thing that going with Pep is that he overthinks everything. Uh, the counter attack of Lyon is very fast, so yeah. for that he took uh, he took a defensive strategy and uh, he put Fernandinho in the midfield. But one thing I didn't understand that why he put an inexperienced uh, defender such as Eric Garcia with uh, Laporte. Exactly. I think exactly. Stones will and, and that will get a chance three, there. Three man defense, like I I have, yes. I can't understand yes. why he did that. I I didn't I didn't get why Pep did that. And Fernandinho in the middle position. Fernandinho played the whole season in the back, so putting him in the middle position that too in a very crucial game and that didn't work out because the pace of Fernandinho was lacking and Leon was and the counter attack of Leon was very fast and we are exposed to counter attacks every time. Every time we are Leon counter attack, they put a target on goal or they put a goal. So that is our main thing. And Kevin De Bruyne on the right flank of the attack didn't work so well everyone is blaming starling for missing a sitter but if starling scored also then also the result will wouldn't be that difference wouldn't make that difference all right so, so many are telling huh. yeah yeah yes, yes, yes. like i just want to ask ask you one thing that do you think the position play that city did uh, that city played in uh, with is a thing of the past now because as you can see they had 72% possession they had 637 passes whereas leon had 28% possession and only 257 passes but they still managed to get the goal 250 yes 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 actually because 
something like uh, Pep's football is now getting kind of outdated. He need to modify himself because we are very much vulnerable to pacey counter attacks. Uh, our back couldn't handle that counter attack. They are always going for the attack, but when it comes to counter attack, they couldn't handle the attackers so well. And uh, one thing we lack that is our finishing in the uh, penalty box. We are missing chances. We are uh, putting uh, uh, in the penalty box. We are not. We are getting chances, but we are not converting into goal. So that is why you can see the position is with us, but there is no outcome of that position. So I think Pep needs to modify his strategy for a bit because now football is uh, modifying himself because we are now seeing very much counter attacks, high press football, and in these circumstances, I think playing the possession football is not will not always gonna work, especially against teams like Lyon. Uh, if we if we face against Bayern also, they will also just uh, expose our defense very uh, very badly, and I think it would also. Uh, not like Barcelona eight two, but still we will also get thrashed by Bayern in the semi final. But uh, let's finish up this particular match by can we? It, is it safe to say that it was a strategic disaster by Pep? What do you guys think? Hello, you are muted. I like my world. Yeah, can is it safe to say that that particular match against Leon was a strategic disaster? Yeah, yeah, it's a strategy that didn't work well for Pep. I think Pep thought for for a defensive strategy, but that backfired Pep. I think if Pep played David Silva and uh, and uh, when Pep substituted Mahrez, the attack was more often. But uh, before Mahrez, the game was just dull. So I think if Pep play, play, played for his uh, normal offensive players, then the result could have been a different. So the the strategy that Pep thought it backfired him. All right. So now coming to Prakhar, there is there is another uh, match uh, that was a bit weird. That is uh, RB Leipzig and Atletico Madrid. Did you like? Think on any of your wild days that Leipzig might just go through and might just beat Atletico Madrid. Uh, personally, I didn't. I didn't think. I thought Leipzig is going to be thrashed, like with yes, Timo Werner yes. out of the squad. Completely, when uh, Atletico scored, we. I also thought that yes, it's done, and maybe they will score more. They were playing good, but uh, how Leipzig? Back in the match, that's the first thing. That plan B, when uh, they, you know, they doing the right, uh, right and left flank, they were using that, uh, getting crosses and playing from the, uh, pushing the midfield line from the, uh, in front. So that's the thing when uh, it changed and they scored. And, and that so match, didn't, in, I didn't expect it, but it's a very, very great thing. Yeah, but uh, in that match, what we could see is a lot of fighting, a lot of rough, uh, rough gameplay. It's like there were twenty-one fouls by RB Leipzig, twelve fouls by Atletico Madrid. Do you, is, is it safe to say again that uh, RB Leipzig outmuscled Atletico Madrid in in the quarterfinal? First thing, first thing, it, it, they it bullied can be Atletico Madrid. Bad. Yes, yes, it can be the strategy. Yes, when you are playing a pressing football, you are going to grab the ball. That these fouls are uh, happening for that. So it happened, and they fouled a lot. But yes, they played also well. They outplayed their opponents at the last. So that's the thing, and they are uh, playing today in, with PSG. So yeah, that's so their victory. What I, I personally, what I could see is the the fouls that Leipzig did were a lot of tactical fouls because. Out of 21 fouls, they got only three yellow cards. Yes, so that shows yes, a lot about how they are actually doing, uh, making, going through with their tackles. Yes, so, yes so, sometimes, sometimes the, uh, the players foul like this way that uh, the opponent mentality got broken. You know, they yeah. change their mentality. Yes, they, they they are committing so much foul that the opponent can play. They they can push the opponent. So that's why they did. And they did push the opponent, and that's what I was saying. That 
today it can also happen that the same strategy it can uh, be taken by this yes. and i think it's very effective yeah, very but effective. against a team like uh, psg which has pace which has decent strength not not as strong as leipzig and of course huge talent so are are they will they be able to keep up with it considering all the tactical fouls and yes, yes. we i i know that psg is a very good team uh, as i don't know uh, mbappe is totally recovered from the thing and he, he can play from the fast i don't know about that yeah <laughs> but if he plays that's a pace from the right side uh, as well as there is neymar who was who was very good in the last match but you know in football everything can uh, change in right. a moment in a in a small span of time yeah we could see so what happened to atlanta in two for months. a good football yes i always hope for a good football and always uh, be watching if if psd played well that's always uh, very great so let's see i hope for uh, libdik can, can can do it but right. so uh, i have a question yes. for each and every one of you is rb libdik the most balanced team in in the championship right now they do not have the best attack they do not have the best midfield they do not have the best defense but in a whole as a team i, I feel that they are the most balanced team bayern has a very good attack lacks in defensive abilities Dep- we could see a lot of defensive laps against chelsea and barca as well but barca could not uh, like capitalize on it city uh, let's not talk about city uh, leon even leon is not that strong defensively now let's talk about psg psg i think is comes second after uh, leipzig when it comes to a balanced team what do you think so obviously like, i have a question for you uh, being a bundesliga viewer uh, what are your views on the player upamecano because i saw i saw his uh, match in the Against uh, Atletico Madrid, he was phenomenally good. But uh, is he that good in Bundesliga also, or is or is was just a one yeah. season, one day player, something he, like that? He is basically a nightmare for the attackers there who lack physical strength and who has speed. Because not only he has speed, uh, physical strength, he can also run behind the striker and he runs really fast. so and just let me confirm you're talking about upamecano who has been recently linked with bayern right is that that the reason yeah so upamecano is definitely one of the best prospects in bundesliga and he has definitely that's the reason he is being linked upamecano is linked with bayern or linked with arsenal with a 60 million transfer uh today we came up uh, we uh, got to know that bayern is also looking for him because uh, I, we have defenders, but we have Boateng, and then we have Sule, and we have Alaba, who is not a centre back. So in that case, we need someone who is not injury prone because uh, Lucas Hernandez is mostly in the hospital and rarely in the field. So we need someone, and definitely Upamecano is. I'm sure it's not just Arsenal and Bayern. There are many other teams behind. So in that way, and in, when it comes to Bundesliga, what I could see in this this particular season is uh, there has been a lot of tactical matches. Uh, small team, small teams, even like almost giving the big teams a run for their money just because of their tactics. So these things changed in Bundesliga, and which I really, really appreciate. So now, uh, today's predictions. Uh, I'll go for Leipzig wins three one. I I go for two one Leipzig. Two one Leipzig. All right. I'll go for two all two all and then Leipzig on penalties. All right. So it's three for Leipzig. Uh, do, is is Kieran Navas Kieran Navas playing today? Any idea? I'm, I'm sure he's going to play. So he's injured. Suspended. So yeah, I heard something that he will be missing the the game again. Rico, Rico will be playing today. All right, so in that case, I'll stick to three one, definitely. No, I'll go. The reason I went for two the two all thing is just because I believe 
and Kunku will score against PSG because he is on loan to Leipzig from PSG. Yeah. So, and I like that striker very much because I remember in 2018 we played a friendly against PSG at Singapore. We beat them 5 1. They played their B team and all. We played with all Abamyangs and Uzils and Vegetarians. But uh, that striker gave us a run for money, bro. Yeah. That striker he's is actually a very underrated yeah. striker, in my opinion. Rukhar, yeah, and your prediction. He, and he yeah. going up with uh, Paulson is something good. Yeah, absolutely. Paulson brings in the strength and he brings in the agility and speed. It's, it's a very good combination. Prakar, what do you think? What's going to be the scoreline? I think it will go to tie break. All right, so that's that's going towards an electrifying match. And, and do you think going for a tiebreaker is going to be insulting for PSG, considering the amount of money they spend on their players? Yes, yes. And uh, can going be, but, against an but, eleven-year-old club. Yes, but uh, if you know they play obviously, if they play good, then yeah. yes. What? Right. Yeah, obviously, for the PSG fans and obviously the club, it's very much disappointing that they couldn't score in the match. But yes, we have to accept right. it. So, let, let's see what happens and uh, we'll come back with another preview of the next match, which is Leon versus FC Bayern, which I'm very tensed about. But then, uh, thank you guys for being here. And uh, anything else you want to add for this uh Wonderful uh, UCL night. Anyone? I think yeah, I the all Bayern, uh, even all Germany clubs final. I think. Yeah, even I am looking forward to it. Let's see. It's many are saying it's going to be an all France. That will that will that will be a shame for us. I mean, if it's even if it's an all German final or all France final, yeah, that will be because anyway. I personally posted a lot about um, all English finals last year. All, All right. English final last year. So now coming back, I see some a league that we as EPL fans, as well as Farmers League or Bundesliga, as the least competitive league, and those two teams competing in an UCL final will be tragic. But still, I will be supporting Leipzig, of course. But at the end of the day, for a good UCL final, I will love. I will love to have PSG versus Bayern. Right. And I also think this is the best chance of Neymar. To win the championship, I think. Yeah, I think this is the closest he can come. He he has come like since he left yes. Barcelona. Yes. Hey, with PSG, I think this year is the best chance. Yeah, PSG is the, is the first time since something on 1994 or 1995 there in the semi-finals of the UCL. Yes. And it's the same for uh, RB Leipzig as well. It's the first time. Okay. All right, let's finish it here. And if you guys liked it, do share and also leave your comments down below. And uh, let's see what happens and let's see who wins when it comes to the predictions. All right, guys, see you in the next one.